Mic check, one, two, one, two. What's good, YouTube? Y'all know what it is, man. This your boy, Tank Be Chopping, and we back with another haircut tutorial. All right, guys, what we're going to be doing on this cut is trimming the top. We are going to keep the curls, uh, mid-drop fade, lining up the vertical bar and the uh, C-cups. So let's go ahead and jump straight into this video. I did already saturate the top of my client's head. Uh, as you can see, it is kind of parted from the side to the top. And as you can see here, I'm uh, bringing up a section, showing my client if that was the amount that he wanted to cut off. And he said, yeah. So I'm basically going to be cutting that much off in a mohawk section coming forward. Now, I know the video is a little blurry on this part. I want to apologize for that. Uh, the camera was focusing on my shirt instead of the haircut. But uh, we're bringing this forward. We're bringing this uh, guideline coming forward. And then as you can see here, I'm setting my sections coming the opposite way. And I'm bringing up a little bit of that original section with every section that I bring up. So, And I'm just making sure that that hair is all even. So I'm going to do this all the way to the back. And then once we got this situated on this side, we're going to move on to the opposite side. So that's what we're doing here. As you can see, I'm still bringing up that section and I'm keeping the middle guideline in, in each section. You know what I'm saying? So the middle guideline is in every section and that's just going to be my guideline for the whole top of the head. Uh, we're taking off that, that amount throughout the top of my client's head. Once again, he is going to be keeping the curls. So you'll see me uh, blow dry the hair and use my diffuser a little bit just to, just to make them curls pop a little bit. Uh, I didn't uh, like go super super dry on top i did give it a semi wet look and y'all see it right now once i once i get there but uh, as y'all can see the top is getting cut down to that length uh we're just going over it all making sure it's all nice and even and if you're not good with scissors on top that's perfectly fine guys just take your time you know what i'm saying make, make sure you you know you understand how to cut the top of your client's hair and just take your time to get that all nice and even for your client As you can see here, now I'm parting the sides from the top. And this is just to help me uh, blend the sides into my clip, my, my clipper work a little more. So as you can see, I'm pulling out the hair and trimming the sides down. And that's just going to make it easier, like I said, for me to blend into that, into that length instead of thinking about, oh, I got to blend into this length that's on top. So this is going to basically tie the top into the, the clipper work. And then we're just going to do the same thing on the back, dropping it down in the back. Still following that guideline. And then I like to do sheer over comb also. So I, I do both. A lot of people ask me, you know, how, how, how do I cut the sides in this scenario? So what I do is, as, as y'all can see me, I'm getting the section and I'm bringing it out with my fingers. And then uh, once I get that done, uh, I go in and just sheer over comb it a little bit just to make it look a little better and, and just to work a little faster and to blend it in a little easier. And that's what works for me. Some people like to just go straight clipper over comb. You, you do whatever is easier for you guys. I like to attack these haircuts like this. For me, it's a little more precise. Uh, I can do clipper over comb. And there are going to be some videos where you'll see me doing clipper over comb. And once again, that's just based on the client and the type of haircut that I'm doing. So now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and blow dry the top a little bit just because it's going to make it easier to fade in. Sometimes it's harder for your clippers to cut wet hair. So I'm just blow drying the top a little bit. I'm not going to get it super, super dry, just enough to where I can still run my clippers through the sides and it can still blend into the top. But as you can see, them curls are starting to come out a little more. Curls looking better, you know what I'm saying? And then I did have, as you can see here, I put my diffuser just to help them curls pop a little more. And once again, I don't want the hair to be super, super dry. I just needed it to be dry enough, you know what I'm saying? So we're running that th uh, diffuser through the top of my client's head just to get it dried up a little more, make them curls pop a little more, you know, give it that textured look that we're actually looking for. And then now we're gonna actually start our clipper work. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna be debulking the sides with my number four guard. Uh, a lot of times this is what I like to do. I like to start off my the, uh, the side of my client's head, my debulk work with a number four. And that's just because it's easier for me to blend into a number four. And then my number four blends into the shear work pretty easy. So that's the reason why I take a number four. You can do a three or a three open. Uh, but for me, I just like to use a number four. That's just the method I use. And it's been working for me. So y'all can see here, I'm just floating my clipper, trying to get a nice uh, debulked area, a nice debulked panel of hair. That way I know what I'm blending into. 
And we're basically gonna do this all around the head. So as you can see, once we get to the back of the client's head, you wanna make sure we drop it. Once again, we are doing a drop fade. So when we get to the back, we gotta make sure that we're dropping it down and don't go too high into the crown area. And as you can see now, moving on to the opposite side, doing the same thing. I'm just taking that clipper and right when I come to about that parietal ridge area, I'm making sure that I float my clipper a little more than usual. You know what I'm saying? And that just helps with the transition, doesn't leave too harsh of a line and doesn't make it hard for me to fade. Uh, a four, once again, like I said earlier, a four basically can blend into the shear work that I did. So that's why I decided to use my four guard, but that's also why I decided to use a little flick out motion, a little float in motion, just to make that transition a little smoother. And as you see here, we're just doing the same thing to the back, tying it all together. And now that that is done, I'm still debulking. This is still some of my debulking phase. Uh, this is my number three guard. And I'm coming right below what I previously did with that number four guard. And once again, I'm just doing this because it makes it a little easier for me. Uh, it's a lot easier to blend into a number three guard than it is to blend into sheer work. So if you think about it like that, I think it'll make it, it'll make your haircuts easier. Like don't overcomplicate the haircuts. If you debulk with a four and then a three, all you really have to do is fade into that three, right? So that's why I like to go and debulk uh, the sides of my client's head with a four and a three because fading into a three is just a lot easier for me. And then once again, once we get to the back, you want to make sure that you are dropping it down. But as you can see, I'm taking my time using the flick out motion, making sure that it's, it's, it's giving a nice blend and a nice transition. Now I'm taking my FX1 trimmer and we are setting in a bald guideline. Uh, once again, we are going to be doing a drop fade. So we are going to drop it in the back below the occipital bone. And then we're going to take off all that excess hair, you know. A, a lot of times, now, I, I just want to touch on this real quick. A lot of times, people are scared of punching the line with the trimmers because they think that it leaves the hair shorter. But actually, this is my personal opinion. Y'all can, can talk about it in the comments. Let me know if y'all think I'm wrong. But I feel that when you punch in a guideline, it's actually a softer line because when you punch it in, you're coming down and you're actually going with the grain opposed to going against the grain. Try it out, like punch in a line and go down and then uh, flip the trimmer and go up and you'll see that it cuts shorter when you're coming up with the trimmer. But that's just from my experiences, you know, that's just what I think. But uh, anyways, after that is done, as you can see, I'm going in with my FX1 shaver and I'm taking all this down to that razor length. Once again, we wanna make sure that the client, this client's haircut lasts them a good amount of time. And I think putting that razor on it really gives another level of blurriness, you know what I'm saying? It just makes that transition and it really makes that, uh, that transition from bald to longer hair look better when it's really, really short. And then we're doing the same thing to the opposite side. And the closer we get to that line, we are making sure we're using a slight flick out motion. That way it's not too harsh of a line. Now, sometimes you are gonna have to go back in and tap at it with the razor or the shaver anyways. But uh, if you flick and you don't apply a lot of pressure, it makes it a lot easier to get that line out. But now that that is done, we're gonna take our FX1 clipper. As y'all can see, your boy's rocking with the FX1 set right now. But uh, we're taking my clipper lever all the way open and we're gonna be setting in our next guideline. And the next guideline is gonna be about half an inch to three quarters of an inch, uh, following the same shape that we originally created. So as y'all can see, I'm coming up that three quarters of an inch or so and I'm dropping my guideline in the back, being really consistent with it, taking my time, but still trying to be efficient with how I'm moving. And I know sometimes people want to uh, speed rush through haircuts. You can do that, but I like to take my time. I just like to be efficient and like to just, you know, make sure my, my stuff is set in right. But uh, now we're going in with my one guard lever open, setting in another section, following the same shape, coming up about another half an inch to three quarters of an inch, using a slight flick out motion. And then uh, we're getting that section nice and, you know, nice and uh, trimmed down to that, to that length, my one guard lever open length. And once that is done, here is my two guard lever open, doing the same thing. And now we're, we're basically trying to blend into the clipper work that we did earlier. Remember guys, earlier in the cut, we, be, we debulked with a number four guard and a number three guard. So a two guard open should blend into a number three guard. And as y'all can see, it is getting, it is getting blended, you know, it, it is looking good. But further on in the video, you're gonna see me actually raise this fade up a little bit because he did want a mid drop fade. And I think when I originally started doing it, I was trying to be cautious with it. So uh, you're gonna see me raise the blend up here in a little bit. And uh, that was an audible on my call. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to look a little, the blend to be a little higher. But nonetheless, now I'm going in with my 1.5 guard lever closed, trying to bridge my one guard lever open to my two, 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 two blah, blah, blah. My one guard lever open section to my two guard section. And as you can see, I will adjust my lever as needed. 
Here's my one guard once again. Now my lever is closed and I'm attacking this bottom line. So let, let's pay attention to this here, guys. As you can see, that blend is looking good. Uh, but in my eyes, it felt a little low. So here in a second, you're going to see me start raising the blend up just a little bit. And that, so that's what I'm doing right here. As y'all can see, I'm coming a little higher than I previously did with that one guard. Once again, that's just to raise the blend because I wanted the blend to be a little higher. Not too much higher, but a little higher. And uh, now I'm going in with my half guard or my zero guard, whatever you want to call it. Lever, uh, My lever is open. And I'm adjusting my lever closed little by little, working my way down. And this is when you really start to see that I raised my blend up. Because you're going to see a kind of like a guideline here in a second once I'm done with this section. And once again, guys, that was just an audible on my part. I did want to raise the blend a little bit. I just wanted it, I just wanted it to be a little higher. So we're still going in with that zero guard or that half guard, adjusting that lever as needed. Once again, taking our time, making sure it looks right. Uh, now I'm going in with my clipper, lever halfway open, working my way halfway into my very first section that I created with my clipper open. And I'm just really tapping at that line, barely coming up into that section, right? So I'm barely coming up and then I'm gonna be adjusting my lever closed, notch by notch, working my way down until that bottom line becomes a race. Now, mind y'all guys, the bottom line may not come erased completely. You know what I'm saying? You may still see that bottom line once I'm done with my clipper all the way closed. And that's when we have to go on with the trimmer or the shaver to get that line to look right. And uh, I just want to put that out there because some people always ask me like that, or they'll tell me that that bottom line is hard for them to get out. What do I normally do? And sometimes I go in with my trimmer or my shaver after I buff it out with my clipper closed. And, that, and that's needed sometimes. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But as y'all can see here, I'm still just working that bottom section. And as y'all can see, y'all can see more towards the top, or not, not the top, but like where the blend is at, there are some discrepancies, there are some darker areas. And once again, that's due to me raising the blend up, wanting the blend to be a little higher. This, this side would have probably already been done if I decided not to raise the blend. Uh, but once again, guys, that happens when you cut hair. Sometimes you call an audible and you change things up and you have to take a little more time to make sure that that side looks right. But like I was saying earlier, guys, I had to go on with my trimmer and that's what I'm doing here. As you can see, I'm taking my trimmer once again, buffing out that bottom line, making sure that bottom line becomes erased. And as y'all can see, I'm just really using the corner of my trimmer just to attack these dark areas, just because I don't want to take off too, many, uh, too much hair or create another line. And now I'm going back in with my 1.5 guard, doing some cleanup work. And just for reference, my clipper was open starting off and now it's closed. And as you can see, I'm still just using the corner. I don't know if y'all can really see it uh, on the video, you know what I'm saying? But I'm angling my clipper slightly to the right. That way I'm barely using the, the last maybe like three or four teeth of my clipper just to be more precise with what I'm doing. And here is my one guard coming right under that. And once again, this is all, I, I have to stay it, man, because y'all gonna be like, man, Tank be moving slow sometimes. But this is all due to me just wanting to raise my blend up. As you can see, there's some dark areas right here that I'm trying to buff out. And now I'm gonna go in with my blending shear over comb. Now a lot of people ask me like, Tank, when do you decide to use blending shears? When do you decide to use regular shears? Well, I already did a little bit of shear over comb. So now I'm just using my blending shears. And, and what I'm doing here is I'm just attacking the very ends of the hair. As you can see, I'm not taking a lot off. It's just the ends, just to buff out these lines and to make the transition look better. So don't go in with your blending shears. I mean, I guess technically you can go in and just chop the hair, just bash the hair, but I'm being, I'm being controlled with what I'm doing. And I understand that using these blending shears, I understand what the blending shears do it doesn't cut every single hair so if i go in super deep with them it's gonna leave like a like a weird look on the blend so i wanted just to make sure that i was tapping at that ends uh, but nonetheless now we're moving on to the trimmers doing the edge up we're just doing the c cup and the vertical bar and then now that that is done uh, we are going back in and doing some detail work i believe this is my number three guard and we're just cleaning up three or number four i ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you i don't know what it is but we're just cleaning up some of this blend towards the top just to make that transition look better but as y'all can see the blend is it's looking pretty blurry you know what i'm saying and once that is done we're moving on to the opposite side and we're gonna be doing the same thing going in with my clipper open setting in the guideline about three quarters of an inch uh three quarters of an inch up and then we're going in with our one guard same thing about half an inch to three quarters then we're gonna go in with our two guard 
that's what I'm doing here. My number two guard setting in another section. Remember, guys, we're following that same shape also. I want to make sure that y'all understand that we got to follow that same shape. Now I'm closing my two and I'm going to start working, working this blend. So that was my two. Here's my 1.5 guard lever closed. Just using the corners. Damn it, Tito. Another one? After that, we're going to move on to the one guard lever closed. And this side did blend a little quicker. Uh, I know that I did speed it up, but this side did blend a little quicker because I already knew about how high I wanted it to be. And uh, sometimes one side of the head is just easier than the other. Like there's no other explanation for it. Here is my half guard, uh, halfway open and then adjusting and close as needed. Now we're gonna go on with our clipper no guard. Lever is halfway open, barely, barely tapping at this line. We're gonna tap this line and then we're gonna adjust our lever close little by little, working our way down until that line becomes erased. And once again, if it doesn't come uh, completely erased, I will go on with my trimmer if needed. Y'all can see that blend coming together, man. Y'all see your boy working over here, man. Let's get it. And just FYI, man, if y'all are, if y'all are interested in any of these tools, uh, FW Barber Supply does have them on the website. They may be sold out right now, but y'all can check with fwbarbersupply.com and use my discount code Tank10 if that's if that's something you want to do, or, or, or not just these tools, but any tools in general, whether it be guards, clippers, combs, uh, sprays, colognes, aftershaves, anything like that. Forward Barber Supply. That's fwbarbersupply.com. Discount code Tank10. But if you've been rocking with me for this whole video, I appreciate y'all. I know this video is a little longer, but I did. I am showing y'all the whole cut. You know what I'm saying? So now that that side is blended in, as y'all can see, I'm taking my trimmers. I'm going to go ahead and line my client up. Once again, just doing the C cup and the vertical bar. And we aren't going to add any enhancements. You know what I'm saying? He needs no enhancements. I feel that the line looks pretty sharp the way it is. And so, and you can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like if you know how to manipulate the hair, you can make these lineups look dark without having to add any enhancements. And I think that's something that a lot of barbers need to learn. You know what I'm saying? Like enhancements, they do make the lines look darker, but you can achieve that blend without without having to use the enhancements. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to put that out there. But nonetheless, going back in, doing some more detail work. This is my one guard, getting the back part of this side of the blend to look right. And now we're moving on to the back. As you can see me do there, I did go in with my clipper open. Now I'm going in with my one guard open. And then after this, I'm gonna take my two guard open. And once again, that two guard is gonna blend into that three guard that I did earlier on in the cut. So I'm gonna go in with my two, close my lever, and start working my way down. Here's my 1.5 guard, lever is open. And sometimes in the back, uh, I do tend to uh, open and close my lever more because the back is always. The back of someone's hair is always the hardest part to fade, at least for me. So I feel like I have to do a lot more detail work, a lot more precision cutting with, with what I'm doing. I gotta be more precise. So I have to adjust my lever a little more when I'm doing the back, but it's all good. You know, the blends come together, they look blurry. And that's basically what I'm doing here, just making sure that this blend matches on both sides and it transitions well into the back. Still having that nice drop effect, but still being blended and doesn't look higher on one side. And, I, and that's the hard thing about doing one side at a time, uh, especially when you're doing a drop fade. It's hard to make a match perfectly but i think i did a pretty good job uh that's why sometimes it's easier just to work all the way around the head but now we're going in with our clipper adjusting our lever closed as needed trying to buff out that bottom line and then we're going to do the same thing to the opposite side of the back and even when i'm doing the back sometimes i like to work in sections I don't like to overcomplicate things. Sometimes if you're looking at a big area, you start getting overwhelmed. So sometimes you can break it down into smaller sections and do it that way. I know some people do it like that. So you got to do what works for you, man. What works for me may not work for the next person. But now I'm taking my trimmer, erasing that bottom line. But uh, now we're going to move on to our razor work. As you can see, we're just going to be razoring the vertical bar and the C-cup. But as y'all can see, that blend looks pretty blended. looks nice. looks blurry. You see my man's got a little bit of curls on top. Y'all see your boy was working, man. Let's go. 
All right, man, but check it out. This is how my man came into the shop looking. This is the before look. It had probably been about a month or so before his last haircut. And this is the finished product. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this haircut in the comment section. If y'all like this video, please make sure to smash that like button. Also, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe one time for your boy. Remember, guys, if you're in the Houston, Texas area and want a haircut from your boy, you can go to my website, tamebechopping.com. You can book there. If you want me to record it for YouTube, make sure to put that in the little comment section. If not, it's all good. Also, if you want to purchase any tools, you can go to fwbarbersupply.com. Use my discount code TANK10. That way you can save yourself a little bit of money. You know what I'm saying? Man. But uh, yeah, you too. Let me know what you think about this cut, man. I appreciate y'all. Uh, I appreciate y'all for watching. If y'all watch this whole video, but that's basically it, man. Until next time, let's get it.